Welcome to the Brand X Podcast. Did you miss us? Come on. Just a little bit, did you miss us? Hi, I'm John. Happy 2017. We made it. We didn't die. Well, you might have died. We don't know about it. But Deuce and I are still here. Deuce, how you doing? How was your holidays? Great. Come and stop, bitches. And uh, I, you know what? Next year, I'm going to have you as part of the best of, or if we ever do a best of again, then I'll do, you know, I'll have you part of that. We could have recorded you in. Uh, we, it was something that we kind of did last minute. We didn't want to just have nothing for three weeks. And a uh, lot has going has gone on since then with us. And I guess we should kind of kind of kind of kind of kind of get into that. Kind of vagina. Kind of vagina. Get into that. Right now, I am not in my normal Brand X blog room studio. I am now in the BXP studio, which is downstairs in my house. I came up with an idea to have another studio. So Deuce could come in here, his brother Joe, technological no-go Joe, and the Jimmy could actually come in, grab a mic, and you know just maybe add some flair to it. Just mix things up a little bit. That's what we're trying to do here. So I got everything ready. Uh, every day I went to my back step and there was another Amazon box. Every time I would do something, I'm like, I need these cables or I need this piece or I don't have this or I need that or I got too many of these. That's usually how it goes. It's the baptism by fire. You find out what you don't have and you thought that you did. And it's like, don't. Oh. <laughs> so, to um, the computer. Yeah. So I have this uh, poker table that I have downstairs that I bought and it's an octagon. And I thought to myself, Wow, what a representation. What a, you know, like the octagon. We're going to have a, you know, we're going to podcast in the octagon. So we'll fence it off and have a cage match. <laughs> we're going to have a cage match. <laughs> like mixed martial arts. So then I put everything on the on the table and I'm like, this is uncomfortable. It doesn't work. You know, I can't have like my controls or you can see me now. I'm, I'm doing the gopher. You can't see me. The pod, the audience can't see me. Maybe Deuce can see me. I'm like doing the gopher at the end of Caddyshack. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I, I just wasn't comfortable with this. So it's very I, scenic. I'm used to seeing your uh, old room. You got the nice sheet of plywood back there. And what's, no, this is actually like uh rustic wood. Look at that. Oh, yeah. okay. It's paneling then. Right. And over here is like a wall. And I put myself in a corner. So I, I just kind of set it up and threw things up here and was testing things. And it, we still have work to do, okay? I had these boom mics I bought, and I'm like, these will work. These will be great. And then I bring them out here, and they won't fit on the table. So I'm like, damn, that won't work. So now I got to go, and I got to get mic stands. I was going to ask you, when I come over— You don't I need to bring anything now. I've oh, got everything. Oh, you, oh, since the last time we spoke to you. Oh, uh, like I told you, every day, the U.S. The UPS truck pulls up and Amazon boxes go onto my back step. Yeah, because I was just going to like just unclamp my mic stand and just bring the whole kit and caboodle with me and then the clamp only it thing, down. But I didn't know you were doing it under a poker table. The only thing you'll need is your headphones because I don't have another. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get uh, sets of headphones. Anybody just comes in, sits down and starts talking. Mm -hmm. uh, today was supposed to be the drinking show. Mm -hmm. So I have a story about the drinking show or the crutch word challenge. Right. The crutch word challenge is when I would say, hey, listen, or trust me when I tell you. or In all honesty. In all honesty. To be quite honest. To be quite honest. Whenever you say, I say that, me. but. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to have the Jimmy here. It's the Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? It's the Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. What and he was going to play a sound effect. He was going to be the referee because. I gotta get a new. I gotta get a new. It's the Jimmy thing, but anyhow, he was going to be the referee because we know that Jimmy's a rule follower. He loves the rules. So if I would have said, you know, a crutch word, he would have played because jackass always takes it up the ass, and I would have had to drink a shot. And if you would have used one, jackass always takes it up the ass. You would have had to drink a shot. Right. So That's all ready to word. do that. That's why Studio B started. To be honest with you, so we get have the drinking game. <laughs> so I have to go to the doctors. And it's no, uh, I'm getting ready to get, you know, the bariatric sleeve surgery because I'm, you know, I'm a fat slob and uh, I well, want to get better. I want to get, I want to get wow. slimmer. Yeah. <laughs> You're a fat slob. I love fat slob. Yeah. Let's put it this way. I could eat free at the heart attack grill. Okay. So, so that being said. The brutally honest. 
<laughs> yes. So anyhow, I was on my way to the doctor's. I'm walking in. And uh, I get into the office. And he opens up the door. And he walks in. And he, I said, hey, how's it going? He goes, oh, by the way, you can't drink. And I go, what? He goes, you can't do a drinking <laughs> show. And I, I was like, I mean, I'm telling you, it was like someone hit me in the face with a pie. So I said to him, did my mom call you? Because that's not beyond what my mom would do. Because she called too when she heard the, the best of. And he said, well, no. Was it wasn't like it was going to be the drinking and driving show. Yeah, okay, right. <laughs> that's what I said. I can't get, but see, here's the thing. The medication that I'm taking, I can't drink with. He says, if you were going to have like a drink with dinner, a glass of wine or something like that, fine. But you can't go shot for shot. <laughs> <laughs> on a crutch word challenge, he says, that could kill you. I mean, he says, I mean, that could kill you. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, well, now what am I going to do? So we had to kill the crutch word challenge. Yeah, after we hyped the shit out of it. Yeah, I'm so sorry, guys. I mean. Well, hey, you know, you got to. Maybe we should do something else. Like, I don't know. The pie just... in the face crutch word challenge. <laughs> the, you the... can't take pies in the face. You <laughs> <laughs> You were trying to lose weight. The rubber band smack to the back of the neck, you know, crutch word challenge, like Jimmy's walking around. You know, mm-hmm. ah, ah. No, I, I mean, I can't, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to, it was a great idea, but I don't know. Now, how how long will that go on for? I mean, after the surgery, I mean, is that something where you won't be able to like, uh, yeah, well, see, after in, the surgery, for quite a while or after the surgery, you can't drink like that because well, you, no, you got to do it every half hour. Right, but not only that, but I mean, you you immediately get like plastered. Like you can't drink. Like th- that would be like that's what I was thinking. I'm thinking this is after before the surgery. I can still try. After the surgery, I won't be able to do that or, at all because here's the thing: alcohol is all sugar. And when you get in, when you do something like that, or you eat too much sugar or too much carbs or whatever, I forget what they call it, but basically what it means is you throw up. All okay. right, so yeah, it's like I think they call that alcohol poisoning. No, <laughs> no, no. I'm saying like if you drink too much, like if I had like a milkshake or something, there's too much sugar involved in something like that. There's a name for whatever it is, oh, it's but like it a means diabetic rush almost. Or... Yeah, but whatever it does, you, you put it in your stomach, and your stomach says "fuck that," <laughs> and that's the end of that. It comes right back out. Mm. So, yeah, no more drinking show for now. For now. Unless I can find somebody that'll tag in. <laughs> oh. You know, like a So like it's a like a runner. duel, like you have seconds. <laughs> well, that ain't a bad idea. You just get two rummies off the street. Like, you're John's <laughs> rummy. <laughs> you're Deuce's rummy. <laughs> and then we could just, like, say our crutch word's wrong on purpose just to see these two poor bastards get all fucked yeah, and up. And by the end of the day, you know, we'll you know we'll be sitting there looking at them. They'll be right as rain. Now, we got to find somebody, uh, again. Taking them out in an ambulance. Right. <laughs> Pump in their stomach. <laughs> my, yeah, my luck. I'll get sued. You know, both of them will die. What happened? Well, we were doing a drinking show podcast. What? Yeah, that's not going to work too well. The drinking challenge by proxy. Right. You hire two, uh, <laughs> two rummies to come in. and <laughs> Look, he, he can't drink, and I got to drive home, so you guys have to take the shots for us. Okay. All right. Yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> yeah, so we did the – we had the two – best of podcasts and i actually have a story today about the jimmy he was um he had a piece of his teeth tooth tooth he had a piece of his tooth break off Ooh. and they had to go in and you know grind the rest of it down he got a new crown or whatever yeah been there done that got the t-shirt so he's in there and he uh they want him to, you know they give you like you put headphones on or something like that so you don't have to hear the drilling and all that, you know, you still smell the smoke and all that other nasty stuff that goes on. But uh, he was in there and he was listening to the Best of Podcast. And he said he was, it was cracking him up. So, uh, you know. Now, is that wise to be laughing when the <laughs> dentist has got drills in your mouth and no grinding idea. away? <laughs> but uh, you're just in there minding your own business. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then that's when the dentist wants to strike up a conversation. So how's your new year? Okay. So so how how was your holidays? 
Oh, my God. The name, How was the, your holidays? Happy New Year, by the way, belated. Thank you. I, you know what? I, you know me. I don't give a shit about Christmas. I hate Christmas. So oh, I didn't care. Hate is kind of a I, strong yeah, I don't word, like John. It. Yeah, I don't like it. I, I mean, Christmas. I hate Hitler. So let's oh, and I don't hate Christmas there. as much as okay. Hitler. But I don't, yeah. <laughs> I don't like Christmas, okay? I don't like the whole getting, you know, the gift giving, the whole, the, the, I just don't like it. What salad you on it? <sighs> Life. Mm. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't want to get, you know, not to get too, I know you, you don't want to get too philosophical, but, um, I used to, um, stress out over, it. I think it's the stress level that yeah. people don't like. And I remember back in the day, I'd get gifts for my parents. I'd get gifts for my two brothers, gifts for my grand, you know, and, and now all the, everyone's gone. Me, me, Joe and Mike, we just don't exchange gifts anymore. It's like, what's the point? You know? Right. But exactly. now it's like I found out like in the last couple of years, I only have one gift to buy, and that's for Diane. Right. And like a part of me kind of missed all that hustle and bustle, like running here, running there, going to the stores and everything. And and I was a, a true guy. I started on the 23rd, yeah, challenge yeah. Christmas shopping. That's what I used to do too. Yeah. But well, just- and that's your own fault for putting that level of stress on you, but that's what guys do. Right. But it was weird in a weird sense, like I missed it. I, I You know, it, it, I, I, found, I found myself missing that part of it. Because the people are gone, I guess. That that sucks too. I'm not going to lie. You know, my father's not here anymore. But but I mean, the kids. The kids still. It's still fun to go see the kids open their gifts. You know, I go in the morning back to the house where I used to live. <laughs> you know, I go in there, and they open up the gifts and everything, and then we have breakfast together, and then they leave and they go to their aunt's house for dinner, and then I usually go home and get Chinese food and watch football or. Or whatever, whatever I want to do. And I, I got back and I wasn't, um, I don't know, I was tired. And I laid down. The next thing I know, I woke up at 1130. I didn't get my, didn't get my Chinese food. <laughs> I didn't get anything like that. So, you know, that was, a, you know, it was just, I don't know how to explain it. I mean, it sounds like such a sad sack thing to do, but, you know, I just didn't feel like doing anything for Christmas. I, you know, I, hate, I always said that if I ever struck it rich and could do anything for Christmas, I would leave the day after Thanksgiving, Black Friday, and I would go to an island like Aruba or something, and I would come back January 2nd or 3rd. Just miss Like it. they don't have Christmas there? Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I, I would imagine, I don't know. I think know, I probably. just spotted the glaring flaw in your plan here. I, you, yeah, I, if I, you're going to you, go to some pagan country, they right. might be able to pull that off. But... Yeah, I just, but I think it might be a little bit different. I don't know that. I have no idea. But maybe it'll be just a little bit different. Um, you know, again, Christmas is like the only day that everything's closed, which it should be. I'm not saying it shouldn't well, be. Well, not everything. All the places that I would want to go are closed. Well, movie theaters, apparently it's a big business. Well, I never knew Ju- that until yeah. about 10 years ago. I was like, it's, what? It's for the Jews. The movie Jews theaters. get... Chinese, well, Chinese food, food and, and uh, go to movie the movies. Theaters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, they go to the movies. So it's a big Jewish Putting thing. Putting the goyim to the work. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's true. <laughs> and then New Year's, I stayed up and just uh, kind of watched the uh, Mar- Mariah Carey meltdown on America's rocking New Year's Eve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Well, I mean, what are you going to do? There's, I mean, everybody's like giving her a bunch of crap. But, yeah, but talk about dating ourselves, to, not to cut you off, but the first thing that popped into my head was Millie Vanilli. Yes. From back in the day, because we were dish jockeys then. They yes. were the Grammy Award winners that year, and, they, they have, and then like it all crumbled down because they were faking it. Yeah, well, first of all, Mariah Carey's not faking it. Well, she can't. That's the crime, because she can sing. But they can't, they can't have that. They have to lip sync. They just have to. And, and guess what? I don't even mind that. I don't even really mind it. Uh, uh, okay, it's not. It, it's cheating. I'm not going to lie. It's cheating. But I don't want to hear her like belting out with all everybody screaming in the background. I, I'm not a big fan of concert. Av- oh, Bruce Springsteen live or the Who live. I don't want to hear that shit. I don't want to hear everybody in the background screaming. You know, I don't want to hear that. Um, that depends on the performer too. No, I don't even want to hear it with anybody. It's like one of well, the back things- in the day, because live out, like uh, when when Kiss put out their live album in seventy five. Let's really date ourselves. Go ahead. Well, well that well that created all these string of live out because like back in the day, you remember if you didn't have Frampton comes alive, you were like 
the, the biggest square on the planet in when we were in school back then. I, I in, never liked Peter Frampton. Really? I never had Frampton come. I couldn't. That song loosened my stool. Which I just one? I didn't like it. I didn't like him. I didn't like the song. I didn't like any of that crap. You didn't like it with Humble Pie? He no. was with Humble Pie? No. <laughs> didn't people. like any of it. Don't didn't like – wasn't a fan. Uh, yeah. I've grown to – I've grown an appreciation of his music now. Like if the song comes on now, I'm like, eh, Peter Frampton, don't listen to this. Mm-hmm. There were certain groups back then that I, I can't stand Rush. I know everybody's like, oh, my God, Rush. I yeah. never liked Rush. As soon no, as it's I love like, Rush. Or you yeah, Rush, I know. Man. You, Joe, love Rush. But as I, soon think, as that, I think I must have seen them about 18 times. <laughs> really? Well, I would, they love Philadelphia. And every time they would come to Philadelphia, they would do like two, minimum of like two. Three. They, they wouldn't play Philadelphia to the extent that Springsteen would. But they would play a minimum of two shows. And I saw like five or six tours of Rush. And I think Joe's seen them more than I have. Philadelphia in the 80s was the mullet capital of the world. And these guys would come in, and they just fit right in with the mullet capital of the world. Uh, yes was another band I couldn't stand. No, I saw them a couple of times. You just don't like progressive rock is what you're telling me. Okay. Well, I mean. So you don't like old Genesis, but you liked it when they became the Phil Collins band. That's correct. Okay. That is true. So. That is correct. Saw Bruce Springsteen a ton of times. Never liked him. Never really liked him. Listen, I, I, don't hate- own, I don't own a Bruce Springsteen. I don't I, own a spruce. I just never. And the other thing is, I, just because I was, I, I didn't like the idea that just because I'm from New Jersey, I have to like him. Right. I'm like, well, where's that written then? Well, like, let me tell you something. He doesn't his have band it. was awesome. Right. And but, he proved me right. Because I, I always used to say, if it wasn't for that band, he'd be a nobody. And then he retired and he broke the band up. And then his solo career tanked. And then he had to go back and suck all the band members off and get them back together. And then, then he went and then he had a career again. So. Right. Once again, Deuce was right. Yeah, but I'd like Took years to prove it. But there's a, a band that used to that kind of came up around the same time Bruce was uh, Southside Johnny and the Asbury Southside Dukes, Johnny, like them. Uh, George Thurgood, which was a Delaware band, you know, saw him a ton of times. But the, here's what I was going to say: is if you go to a Bruce concert, it's really, really good. I've seen. Well, you him. get your money's worth. Yeah. He he plays for hours, right? Like three, four hour concerts. I mean, if you, I, I will tip my hat to him. There, you go to see him, you do get your money's worth. And it's not bad. The music, I guess that's you know, it's like a bar band. He, it's better live. That's a, okay. For me, Bruce Springsteen is better live than his uh, studio albums. Everybody else, not so much. Mm-hmm. So I, that's all I can say about that. What's well, the best concert you ever saw? Or you just didn't like to go to concerts? No, I love to go to concerts. Wow, that's a – okay. I'm, this is going to sound really crazy. I mean, even if it wasn't a big group. No, well, it, it was it actually was a great adventure, and the group was uh, Cheap Trick. Okay. And the, I'll tell you the story about that one was Sandy was a huge fan. The girl I was dating at the time was a huge fan of Cheap Trick. So we go, and we get there, and we got pretty good – You know, we're up pretty close to where they are. They come out. And all these guys are picking their girlfriends up and putting them up on their shoulders, you know, to watch the concert and everything. And, uh, you know, Sandy is not a small woman. She's well, she's like 6'9". <laughs> she's 5'10". <laughs> okay. And, you know, I'm not saying – and she wasn't heavy. She was a thin woman and stuff like that. But 5'10 is, you know – so anyhow, she's like, put me on your shoulders. I'm like – here now, which was an insult to my manhood. So of course I put her up on my shoulders, and I bet you I must have stood there for a, a long time while yeah, she well, was. You're what, like six two? I'm six foot. I'm okay, six okay. Foot. I thought you were a little taller than. Yeah, so you're six foot, and you're you're tossing some five foot ten broad on your. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it must have looked like Mardi Gras, like when they like... come down with those big things. <laughs> But she was up there and, uh, you know, she was up there for a couple of songs. She loved it. So, uh, you know, that was a really good one. We, I really enjoyed that concert. Uh, top second concert I went to, a really obscure band. It was called The Babies. And I saw them at the Rendezvous. Tower Theater. Yeah. And that John was, Waite was the lead John singer. John Waite that. was the lead singer. And it, when I saw him, the guitar player and I think the piano player that played for Journey was in the band. Back then, like the babies broke up and then the guitar player and the piano player went to Journey. 
And then what was the last one I was going to say? Because it was a really good concert. Oh, it's my damn memory. But anyhow, those two were really, really. Oh, uh, Meatloaf. I went to see Meatloaf. Oh, yeah. Well, he's astounding. At the Spectrum. And we had uh, seats off to the side. And I got to say, I was married. So I was in my 40s. And we snuck down, me and th- three of my friends, we snuck down and got on the floor. And then we worked our way up and we were right on the rail. Like we were right there. Uh, right. So that was cool. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. And we were like like these old – well, I guess there was – you didn't see too many young people at Meatloaf, but they were younger than us. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that was my – probably my three top concerts. Now, it's not like I didn't go to a lot of shows. I went – I've seen the Rolling Stones. I've seen the Who several times. I've seen – Several farewell tours. Several farewell – I went to their first farewell t- tour yeah, in I was 1982. There. I see you there. In 19, well, I mean among the 100,000 people at JFK yeah, Stadium? Yeah. Yeah, that was where the Hooters opened up, and then mm-hmm. Santana, the Clash, and then the Who. I slept through Santana. I'm not a big Santana fan. Yeah, it's the best. Like, well, I'll, I'll sleep here. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, the best concert I ever saw was uh, it was a I don't know uh, back in the day, like you said, Philly was a pretty happening city. Sure, uh, cause yeah. We had the Hooters, and we had uh, Baru Review, and uh, Tommy Ooh. Conwell and the Young Rumblers. You know, so and they they all got concert uh, or recording contracts, but the Hooters, I used to hang out at Stockton State College down near the Jersey Shore, and the Hooters were playing at Stockton State College, and the opening act was Tommy Conwell and the Young Rumblers, and that was probably the best concert I ever saw because you're in that small venue, mm-hmm. and they're like, you know, the Hooters were big in Philly at that time, and then they had just announced that they got a record deal. Everyone was excited about that. So it was just so much energy in that concert. You know, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, and it was rock and roll, which is dead now, basically. No one's really making new rock and roll, to be quiet. We saw groups open. They became big. We went to see – the first concert I ever saw was Kiss, and that was with the original lineup in the 70s before uh, Peter, Chris, and Ace Freely left. And I, know, I don't know if you know much about Kiss. Not really. The opening act for them was this little known group called Judas Priest. And uh, that was before they hit it big. That was the opening act for Kiss. And then uh, the Kinks, I saw them on a couple of tours, and they had an opening act. Uh, they had Red Rider one time. They did uh, Lunatic Fringe. Uh, well, that's one of my favorite songs. Yes. Right. Well, Tom, Tom, uh, Tom Cochran wound up having a hit years later with Life is a Highway. Mm-hmm. Well, that, he was in that group. So that was, that was pretty cool. It was pretty cool to catch group. Groups that are on the rise, and like, uh, and usually nobody wants to see the opening act, right? But and even back then, you didn't know who they were, so it was it wasn't like you were going to see the opening act. You know, what's funny now as I see because I go to concerts. Well, I've been to a couple concerts lately. Bands I have no idea who they are, and I've never listened to their music. But what happened is my daughter, teenage daughter at the time, wanted to go. One of the things that she went to was the Warp Tour, which is in. Camden in New Jersey and the, oh, the Warped Tour. Yeah, it's kind of like a it's kind of like a Woodstock thing. Listen to this. Listen to the old guys talk about Warped Tour. So what happens is all these bands they go and there's like on five different stages all over this area. It's like well, kind of like Burning Man, like out in the desert. Only well, it's in it's, in the demilitarized zone city of Camden. Right. So they have like all these f- different five stages and they have the main stage. And all day long, there's just one band after another after another. And when I tell you there had to be 50 to 100 bands that played in that arena that day, I'm not lying. And what they do is they all have like merch tents, merchandising tents. That's how they they tour. They go around and they sell merch, you know, T-shirts, whatever they sell. Who knows? So I go with my daughter and um, she's 15, 15. And she's with a friend. And I said to her, listen, whatever you do, please let's not get into a mosh pit. I don't want to – you know, <laughs> I mean, I don't understand where this started with these these knuckleheads running around trying to kill each other. If that's dancing. So I said, no mosh pits, please. She goes, OK. So she wants to get close to the – there's this one band. Oh, this is so-and-so, whoever they were. I have no idea. All sounds the same to me. Wait, am I an old guy or what? Listen to me. 
Bitching and moaning. <laughs> Bitching and moaning. So I said, okay. So I'm holding their two backpacks. So they go and they're up on the rail. I can watch them from where I'm at. I'm right standing next to the sound, the sound guy. You know, they have the, in the back, they have the where mixing the, board exactly. is elevated. Thank and- you. I'm standing right there and I'm watching. All of a sudden, you see all these goofballs. They go into the center and they put their hands together. Oh, here comes the mosh pit. They push back. They just push back as hard as they can. And they make a circle and they start running across and killing each other. The problem is that they did it where my daughter and her friend are on the rail. And all I can see is these guys crashing into her and like she's like almost falling over. And I'm like, uh-huh. and I didn't even know what happened, but I still have my backpack in my hand. I go out and I, I go busting right through the circle and I come like a, like a moose. And I come through <laughs> man of action. <laughs> so the first thing I see is this guy, like he's running like dead at me. So I drop my shoulder like a linebacker and just brace myself and he bounced off me like I was a fifty seven Chevy. <laughs> and then the second guy comes and I just kinda windmilled him to the side and then I got to her and then I, I just like stood with my back to the mosh pit and had my hands out. And, like, these guys are bouncing off of me, and, I mean, they're bouncing off me. And all I'm saying to myself is, please, don't fall. And then my daughter turns around and looks up, and she goes, what are you doing? I said, apparently, I'm saving your life. So they're What listening. are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing? What are you doing here, Dad? So I'm... Picking fights. What does it look like yeah. I'm doing? So I go, and now the, the song is over. So I look at the two of them, and I go, can we get out of here now? And she's like, yeah, 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 okay. So we move on. You know, we kind of work our way out before the next song started, and we get out of there. And these two guys walk up to her, and they go, who are you? And she goes, "Um, Chris, you know, she said her name. And she goes, why do you have a bodyguard? And (laughs) she goes, that's right. That's not my bodyguard. That's my dad. (laughs) Bodyguard. Yeah. It's just, it's, you know. Well, talking about like concerts like that where it's like a, a big participation thing. Uh, I like the Grateful Dead, but I never understood the whole um, shiftless, unemployed fans that just followed them around <laughs> <laughs> wherever they went. <laughs> so when I had my store, I had this customer. He was an over the road truck driver. And, uh, you know, he would go pretty far. Like he would go mostly, I think he was always stayed east of the Mississippi, but you know, you could go all the way down to Louisiana, Florida, Michigan, whatever. So he came in he, to the store and he looked exhausted. And I was like, yo, you know, what's up? How you doing? He says, oh, I'm exhausted. I said, oh, a long trip. I said, oh, you don't know the half of it. He says, so he says he was down south somewhere and he goes, don't you know it? My fucking luck, the Grateful Dead was down there. And I'm like, what does that have to do with, like, why you're tired? You know, you're a truck driver. Well, apparently, these fucking deadheads, they overwhelm truck stops and laundromats. And he had nowhere to, like, wash his clothes. He had nowhere to, like, take a shower because all these friggin' hippies <laughs> are all over there setting up these, like, tent cities selling jewels and bangles and weed and whatever the hell else it was. And he he was exhausted. He said I had – and he didn't have a, a sleeper uh, truck. So he was dependent on hotels, like right. for truck drivers. He, so you, he had to sleep in his truck, yeah. in the driver's seat. And he, so he said, I didn't get a good night's sleep. These bastards were everywhere. <laughs> they stink. They got hairy armpits. He was just like going on and on. I'm like, wow, I'm sorry to hear that, man. Well, you've heard of the band Fish, P-H-I-S-H, yeah. I think it's called. Yeah. Kind of like the Grateful Dead. Back in the day when I was an elevator repairman, uh, they had like a, a three day concert. They had three day, uh, three night concert at uh, in Philadelphia. And the one hotel that I took care of, which was right out by the stadiums, was packed. So they call me and they go, "We have an entrapment." I go, "Okay." They go, "There's 35 people in the elevator." I go, "Excuse me." She goes, "There's 35 people in the elevator." 35. Jesus. And I said. Christ. That's impossible. You couldn't get you couldn't stack thirty five people in there. She goes, They're telling me it's thirty five people in the elevator. I said, Okay, I'll go. So I jump in my van and I'm not that far away. Fifteen minutes I'm there. And I get there and I look 
and I walk around, and the elevator is down on the buffer. It's like below floor. It's on the buffer. The doors are completely ripped off. And I go, what the hell happened here? So the manager comes up to me and he goes, dude, he goes, I don't know what you got to do, but you've got to try to get this elevator fixed because I got this place full of these people from fish, fans. And if I only have one elevator, they'll destroy that. They'll destroy everything. So I look, I'm like, I, I don't know if I can fix all this. I don't even know if I have parts. The doors were bent. I mean, they bent the doors. They got in there. They ripped the doors off. They ripped the interior doors off. They ripped the exterior doors off. So they were trapped and freed themselves? Yeah, that's what, what they that's did, what you're encountering? they went to the top or wherever they were. The doors opened up, and they kept trying to get in. And they jumped on top of each other like it's a mosh pit or like, like they were doing. Ugh. So they're, they're pa- squeezed in there. They're packed on top of each other. The elevator comes down. Well, it was overloaded, so the brake couldn't hold. It gets to the bottom floor and slides right through the brake on the buffer. Now they're stuck. The doors won't open. Nothing happens. It's, they're stuck in there. And, I mean, that had to be something else. How they got somebody to open those doors, they got they tore the doors off the inside of the car. They tore the doors off the outside of the car. Mm. That would be the poor son of a bitch who's on the bottom of that pile. So they, they get them all out of the elevator. And they counted them, and there was 35 people in that elevator because they had to, they, were, they called the police. The Damn. the manager says to me, he says, I was so glad when that son of a bitch from the Grateful Dead died, Jerry Garcia, and now we got this man. <laughs> <laughs> so I called my buddy. I said, we got carte blanche, man. Get out here. Let's see if we can fix this thing. So we start. We're starting to fix it. Meanwhile, all these chuckleheads are coming up to us. They're coming around the barricades, and they're trying to get into where we are. And this one kid, he's in his early 20s he's like man i want to climb up them cables come on let me in there i want to climb up them cables uh, and i'm like dude get out of here before i hit you with my hammer aren't they coated with like grease of course there's they no are way, you know where you'd be able to climb that there's no way he could climb it it'd be like a circus right, act. but he wants to climb the cables so finally i look at him and i look at the guy i'm working with and i go you know something that's the problem with youth it's wasted on the young I said, here you are in a hotel full of beautiful women. Look at that one. Look at that one. Look at that one. And your dumb fucking ass is over here trying to climb up greasy cables, kill yourself. I said, see, I'm older. I'm smarter. I said, if it was me, I'd be trying to get that chick in a cab over to Pat Steaks. And the next thing I know, I'd have her up in my room. And he's like, dude, you're on to something. So next thing I know, I see him over there. He's talking her up. And they go scooting out. And uh, next, you know, he comes back about two hours later. He's like, went to Pat Steaks. We're going to go upstairs. I'm like, all right, man, knock it out. And I just, you know, I said, here's a guy trying to climb cables to kill himself. Look at you. You're Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, if I was 25 years old in this place right now, all the poontang that was walking around, the stoned, drunk poontang that was walking around there. Susceptible to Jedi mind tricks. Any mind tricks. <laughs> oh he God. proposes people. Could have had a painting collection by the next day. <laughs> Probably not. They didn't wear any, but I'm just saying. The thing is that youth is wasted on the young. By the time you figure out what to do and how to do it, you're too old. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't yeah, know. Or you're, or you're paralyzed because uh, <laughs> you had too much fun. Well, the moral of the Making story stupid was, decisions. Right. The moral of the story was we did get the elevator fixed. So we did get it fixed. It took us until about six o'clock in the morning. We got there at one thirty. Six o'clock in the morning, we got everything back together, got the thing running. And uh oh, I'll never here's the other story. So I gotta tell you. This was this was hysterical. So they only have one elevator running. So it's coming down, it's completely packed. Somebody upstairs is overdosing on drugs. Ugh. So the police come in with the the paramedics and they're standing there with the the gurney and they're waiting to go up. The elevator comes down, it's full of people, but they want to go back up again. So the cop says, please exit the elevator. And all I because I'm to the side, I can't see what's going on. All I hear is, fuck you, pig. In Philadelphia? <laughs> yeah, that's not a the good thing. The cop reaches in. I just see him reach in. He grabs this kid up against the wall, cuffs him, kicks his legs out. He's laying on the floor face down and goes, Anybody else want? Anybody else have a problem? All of a sudden, they go, "Oh man, no problem, problem." They all walk off the thing. And the guy yeah. goes up. About five minutes later, the guy comes <laughs> down with this guy on a gurney, all gargling, some kind of white foam coming out of his mouth. Yeah, that's nice. I'm like, yeah, I don't think I, I don't think he's going to make it. 
Here, here's a Genga story back in the youth regarding the Philadelphia Police Department. <laughs> you know, back in the day, the uh, the lig bits, you know, uh, which is LGBT. Oh, you know, just it's just easier to just say lig bit. So I so, say the alphabet soup community. Yeah. So it's like, but back in the day, um, there was laws in the cities, and Philadelphia was one of them. It was a crime. Uh, basically to keep them from walking around dressed up as women. So the crime was impersonating a woman. You may have heard like those references, like in really old movies, that's like, that's what the charge was. Well, what that was for was to keep people of that community from, you know, expressing their inner desire, I guess. They were. So they used to love Halloween because it's Halloween. You dress up in a costume and there would be this parade somewhere in Philadelphia. (laughs) So Genghis and a friend of his, they're like, you know, 16 or 17 years old, you know, they're like looking to go somewhere and this parade's going by and there's a Philadelphia cop there. And it's probably the last place in the world that this cop wants to be. He's keeping people back. Get on the sidewalk, get on the sidewalk. And, you know, they're restless. They want to get by. So the cop waves his like nightstick at them, but at Genghis and his friend and says, I told you. Get on the sidewalk. I'm not going to tell you again. And Genghis's buddy goes, hey, look, John, there's one of them now dressed as a cop. <laughs> Genghis was like, I thought he was going to murder us. <laughs> he said, that cop chased them for like 11 blocks. And, said, oh, and if he caught us, they would have thought nothing of just laying that, that <laughs> nightstick right across your head because that's the way it was done back in the 50s and the early 60s. Never mess with Philly cops. He says, oh, when he said that, like, you know, Genghis was like, oh, I just wanted to shit myself. He goes, hey, John, look, there's one of them now dressed as a cop. <laughs> one of them. Get- Getting chased through South Philly by a cop. Better watch out. Back then, and back in the day, man, all the cops, they had like those height requirements. Yes. Like, yeah, like every cop in like Philadelphia back then was like minimum like six foot high, you know, tall. You know, they were all like, Frank Rizzo was a tall bastard. He was like six four or something. Well, there's a section of Philadelphia that's, uh, it is east of, it's east of Broad Street. And south of Market Street, and I think it goes down as far as Pine Street, and it's called the Gayborhood. Mm-hmm. All gay bars are there. All very nice neighborhood. Very nice na- high property value. Very nice neighborhood. Uh, and matter of fact, even the street signs have a, like the little rainbow. Yeah, they got the uh, yeah, and the rainbow th- on top of it. Yeah, and the, I used to take care of the elevator right next to a bar called Woody's. Now we've, oh. we, you know, <laughs> I think we told the story of a friend of yeah, ours. Yeah, but I don't think we told it in its entirety. I think we just kind of like hit on it a little bit. Well, we have a friend, the bitter Asian man, who at the one time was sitting there talking. You should take up <laughs> Anyhow. You should take up scene. <laughs> He, uh, we were sitting there, and he nonchalantly was talking. He goes, "Oh yeah, we even f- function." Nah, you're missing this story. God, you up. tell it. You tell it better. Okay, because I'll rekindle your memory. We went to a bar naturally, and you were driving in the neighborhood like at two or three in the morning, and a lady of the evening approached you and asked if you could give her a ride, and you were like, "No, I really can't do that." Because, oh, come on, like, give me a ride, give me a ride. And then you said, all right, well, it's only like a few blocks up the street. All right, now do you remember? Okay. Yes, but that's not how it went down. So this is – I come out of the one building. That, that was the building I was talking about. Mm-hmm. And I sh- open up the back doors, put my tools away. And when I shut the door, there's a dude that's about, oh, 6'2", and he's in a wife beater T-shirt. Uh, he has boobs. I guess he's on some kind of thing. No bra. Short, like – Denim mini skirt, okay, and high heels, and he's a dude, okay, and he's like, "Can you give me? Can you give me a ride?" And I went, "No, I can't give you a ride. It's a company truck. I'm not allowed. I would get fired." And he goes, "I only got a couple blocks." I go, "Well, then you better start hitting it." Mm-hmm. So he's like, "Come on," and he says, "He says to me, would you like to date?" And I looked at him. I look him dead in the eye. And I go, "Listen, pal, I don't go out with anybody that's got a cock bigger than mine, and I'm pretty sure you qualify." Mm-hmm. So he's like nine and a half inches functional. I'm like, yeah, okay, sorry, not interested. You know, you know, move on. So that was the story. 
I'm telling this story. Chuckle Daddy's sugar <laughs> ball. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so then later on, I'm telling this story in the bar. Mm-hmm. And the bitter Asian man says, oh, yeah, we went to Woody's the other night. I love that place. We can dance and we're not unencumbered by women. Yeah, we're not burdened. By burdened by having to dance with women. I looked at my whole oh, back the truck up. What are you talking about? <laughs> I looked at you and went, burdened? Bur- yeah. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell am I dancing for? If it wasn't for women, I wouldn't be dancing at all. People see me walking around a house dancing. Or- a man of my stature does not dance. <laughs> Yeah, that's not Unless happening. Unless women involved. Yeah, that's the, it's the lubrication of love. <laughs> Got to have some, you know, they're, they're looking at you. They're looking at you to see how you dance. And, of course, you... he was all condescending. Well, truth be told, it's uh, one of the best clubs to be in because you could just go in there and hang out and not be burdened By with women. having to dance with the women. Yeah. Burdened. Burdened. <laughs> but we were like, yeah, and every, since then Joe had said something and we all got a laugh out of that. It was like, ha, 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 ha. And then you're like, ha, ha, ha. Now uh, let's back the truck up a little. You just said <laughs> something there that was very intriguing. <laughs> Which compelled the bitter Asian man to defend his position. Right. Which, how do you, well, listen, if you want to go with a bunch of your friends and hang out in a gay bar and, da- name, name. and, and you want to go out and hang out in a gay bar and dance with other men, I'm like, who am I to say you're not doing it? I don't care. <laughs> don't tell me you don't want to be burdened by women. Yeah. It's the most <laughs> ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. You say that after you get married. I said it before I got married. <laughs> I be burdened with this. <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, after, after you get married, you're married you might, yeah. that you might not want to be burdened by women. I got you. Okay. <laughs> I know what you're saying there. Uh, another, another, I talk a lot of yeah, shit. Another yeah. Gabriel story is uh, <laughs> one, one block up. It's late at night. I get a call. Elevator stuck. I'm over there. I can't get it to work. It's the only elevator in the building. Walk all the way down 15 flights of steps. I got to make the call of shame to my supervisor saying, I can't get this thing to move. So uh, I, may, I call him. Back then, we had beepers and there was we didn't have cell phones. This is how long it was. It was back in like the early 90s. No next tells yet even? No. Like no. No radios. Wow, that's, that you is you a had a beeper ago. and you would go to a payphone. They would page you with a number and then you would call right. and then you would, we would give you the call. So I go. I'm looking around. There's no payphone. I said, where's a payphone at? And the guy goes... Across the street in that bar. I'm not even paying attention. I go rambling into the bar. I go to the guy, yo, where's the payphone? So I go over and I call the answering service. The answering service patches me through to the supervisor. So I go, yeah, I can't get this thing running. I go through the whole thing. What's going on? What I'm, you know, my meter readings, what's going on? And he goes, where are you calling me from? I said, the bar across the street. And he goes, you're in that gay bar? <laughs> and I, I, I put the phone down. I look and I go. Damn, I'm in a gay bar. <laughs> Did it look like the one that uh, that we that, that you put Jerry and Dave in? <laughs> no, no. wasn't that? Bad? No. <laughs> now the um, in the Gilligan and <laughs> Skipper picture. <laughs> now I got to explain that. Uh, bad cop, bad cop show. Uh, there was a somehow there was a. Were we off the air then too? No. Yeah, I guess we, we might have been in it. Yeah, I'm not 100 yeah, percent sure. Think- yeah, because we would have talked. I know they talked about it. Right. How long have we been off? The like three or four weeks. Wow, shit. Right. So anyhow, the Bad Cop, Bad Cop show, <laughs> Jerry and Dave, they were, um, how did this meme war start? Oh, one of their listeners, <laughs> one of their listeners uh, was taking pictures of Luke from the Bold and... What's the podcast? Bold and belligerent. Bold and belligerent. I almost wanted to say bold and beautiful again, but I didn't. Bold and belligerent. <laughs> they took the host, Luke, and they would take his head and put him on different bodies. So, of course, at Christmas time, there was a Christmas party. Dave and Jerry took a picture of themselves, and they put it on social media. Well, you know John, the shit starter. I go, oh, look, bold and beautiful. There's a picture of Dave and Jerry. Now you could take their heads and put them on whatever. You know, that, I can't wait for the I can't wait for the Photoshop war. So... Then I had a friend take their heads, all, uh, Jerry and Dave's head, and put them on Gilligan and Skipper. <laughs> and somehow he put them in a, in a gay bar. <laughs> and the caption underneath was three-hour tour. So 
And then they took, and then they said, I put my picture because I, you know, like I said, I'm not, I don't want to try and say that I'm above all that kind of stuff. If you want to come after me, go ahead, come after me. So the guy, Matt Melner, is, I think his name is Matt. I apologize, Matt, if I'm my, whatever your name. I'm, I apologize. I don't have it up in front of me. I wasn't expecting to talk about this. <laughs> so uh, I put my face there. And then, then the worst thing he did to me was um, he put a Santa hat on me and said, he's alive because I look like Santa. Although Dave, the producer from the Unwritable Rant, he took my head and put me on some fat woman's body. Oh, yeah. It was like the, <laughs> and when, that was like the body of like. When you always hear, like, the ambulance has to come and they got to, like, tear out the window and the walls just to get you out. Right. It's like an intervention. Yeah, so that was about the worst one that I got. But, uh, yeah, Dave and Jerry have got a few pretty good ones that came out. Oh, did you see when the the best one I saw was someone, I think it might have been Dave the producer, put Dave's face and Jerry's face on the album cover of Wham! Yeah. And uh, what was it? Make It Big album. <laughs> Make It Big album. <laughs> It's right after George Michael uh, dropped that. Right. So, and that's, again, that's what I love about the podcasting. I love about podcasting. You get the, you know, it's we're not in competition. I love their shows. You know, Bold and Belligerent, Unwritable Rant, Bad Cop, Bad Cop, Toeing the Trigger, yes. all those Thank guys. Thank God. Like the, the dry spell is over because uh, Three is Comedy is back on the air. I was just. Yeah, Three is Comedy. For a couple of weeks as well. And they, they, they and uh, Jason put up a couple of. You know, best of episododes too. So they had their they're back on the air uh yesterday. Yeah, so you know, we're the we're on social episode. media busting balls, trying to entertain the peoples. Yeah. So um yeah, so anyhow, uh I was hey, speaking of like right, you know, like we, we mentioned uh George Michael dropping dead and <clears throat> I don't know if you saw my Facebook page. There is a video that I found that I think I must have watched it about a a hundred times. And it was they got a thousand musicians at some point during the summer. In Italy somewhere, mm-hmm. and they performed David Bowie's Rebel Rebel. If you have not seen that video, it is like, it's probably one of the best David, it's my favorite David Bowie song anyway. Well, it was like, it's it's mesmerizing. They must have had like 400 drummers and 400 guitar players. They had like three singers to every mic stand. It was 1,000 performers performing that song. Well, now you got to put the, you got to go get the link for the video. It is the most awesome video I had seen in a long time. And I think I've watched it, like I said, no bullshit, like like a a hundred times. It's really awesome. You have to check it out. Well, I guess we're putting that up in the show notes and and people will be able to check it out because it's it's awesome. You, You have to, even if you're not a fan of David Bowie, you have to see this video. All right. So, now we got to bring it all the way back. We got to bring it all the way back because Roll back. we started. We came up with topics today, and we haven't hit one of them. Right. So that's what we. That's do. what we do. I don't even know. We started in music, and then happy holidays, and then we got into concerts, and then we started with the cops and the neighborhood. <laughs> and speaking of the neighborhood, well, it's a very well-rounded podcast. Right. The Golden Globes were on the other night, and I want to bring this up because how do I put this without? Okay. Uh, there's a civil war going on in this country, and it's the blue against the red. And Meryl Streep got up, and she made a statement at the Golden Globes. Half the people praised her. Half the people lost their minds. And do you think I'm a bleeding heart liberal? Well, yeah. But I'm not. So <laughs> anybody that's not goose-stepping to the right, you think is a bleeding heart liberal. liberal. So... Merle comes up and she has this speech and everybody lost their mind. And since you're part of the right, can you explain to me why everybody's losing their mind over that speech? Did you hear it? Well, yeah, I heard it. Okay. Um, well, basically it was, you know, the Golden Globes, the Academy Awards and, and anything like that. They're basically just a whole bunch of places where people that get paid to play make believe are going to congratulate themselves on what a great job they did. And that's basically it. And they, these people are very upset they lost the – their candidate lost the election well, for whatever that's reason. That's true. I understand and you, that. And you move on. Okay. okay? Yeah. But now what they do is she insulted half the country a little bit more than they, by, by digging with the football dig and, you know, and like there's some athletes, there's some actors or performers. They are whatever they are as, uh, politically – but they also know that, like, if you're a Republican performer, you know that Democrats buy 
your product too. And it's kind of like a foolish thing to do. I mean, the smarter people like kind of lay low. And if you were to break that down, if you, um, if you were to break that down point by point, it was so condescending and so elitist. Okay. And she, you know, truth be told, she probably didn't even write it. You know, she stole Hugh Laurie's joke that he had just told 15 minutes previously. So, you know, okay. All right. There you go. All right. Here we go. So here comes the venom. All right. So now I listen to the same speech. Venom. Yeah. There's a little bit of venom in there. You asked me a question. I just said there's a little bit of venom coming out. Oh, she stole this one's speech and all this. All right. Well, she did. He, he, he made the joke about with being you. a. You know, I'm not disagreeing okay, with but, you. But now I'm venomous. A little bit. There's a little venom coming out of there. Okay. Now, see, this is what lefties do. I'm they not, always I'm, go at, again. When you ain't got nothing, you go ad hominem. Wait, let me finish here before you. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. So I listened to the same speech. And again, me being in the middle. Uh, allegedly. Allegedly. Being in the middle. And this is what I took from it is that we have a president that has said some things, and we really need to be able to watch what he's doing and pay attention. Just like they did with Obama Just, the last eight hey, years. Listen. The, the tell me something. To, tell me the right wasn't up his ass like a open if, umbrella. If it wasn't for the right, you know, because the the main uh, the the big three networks and the Wall uh, the Washington Post and the New York Times certainly weren't up his ass like an open umbrella. But the right was up his ass like an open umbrella. Is that and, correct? And 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 had it not been for the right, we would have. If it was like prior to 1988, we would have see, never heard. I'm just anything. asking a question. It was the right up yeah. Obama's ass like an open umbrella. Yes, because they did not, they did not advocate their role as journalists. Okay. Now the left is out and the right is in. So the right is going to be well, up. The, the, the left's going to be Donald up. Donald Trump's really not the right. But. Well, hey, listen, as far as everybody else thinks, he's the Republican, which means that he's the right. I know there's the, the alt-right, the regular right, the Christian right. There's, there's all kinds of rights. And who made those titles up? I would imagine the liberals did. Exactly. Right, you guys don't have any. You better get to work then. You better start making up some. You got limp tards, uh, lib tards. What's the other ones? You don't have any for them? No, we just generally call them lefties. Okay. So any Communist pretty much sums it up nicely. All right. So basically, you guys got to get to work. <laughs> you got to get more titles. That's all I'm just saying. So mm -hmm. she goes off on her tirade. And I wake up this morning. And I knew it was going to happen. I went. And I swear this is what goes on. Donald Trump gets up in the morning. He goes in. He sits down on the toilet, he takes out his smartphone, and he starts a tweeting. And again, you know, he goes after whoever, anybody that says anything negative about him. And again, I'm not even sure that he said it. Well, yes, she said that he made fun of the, the disabled, disabled reporter. reporter. That's, that's their narrative. Right. He made fun of the disabled reporter, which he made. He did make fun of the disability. He, he, I mean, I don't understand what he was saying, but he made, I'll get into that in a second. All right. So. And I will too. I know. That's what I figured. So I figure he gets on the toilet and he starts tweeting. And the first thing he says is Meryl Streep, the most overrated actress. The woman has won more awards. I mean, Golden Globes, Oscars. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I mean, how can you take anybody? Yeah, but who gives those awards I, out? Fellow liberals. Again. The people that are in the, 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 the people that are in the know and the people business. in the club. Yes. I'm not in the club. I understand you and I that. aren't in the club. Well, listen, everybody that has a club. And it gives out awards. Who gives out the awards? The people in the club. But those things are not a, a – winning an Academy Award is not a historical altering event. You got an award for playing make-believe. Yeah. Given to you by other people to play make-believe. That's right. You're the best make-believe. It's not like you cured cancer. It doesn't have to be. Listen, there's podcast awards. And guess who gets together and gives them out? Podcasters. Right? Well, duh. Right. So that's what I'm saying. They're doing the same thing. But the thing is, the podcasters are pretty diverse, and we don't, like, get out there and moralize, and that's what she was doing. She was moralized. She was shaking and wagging her finger at half the country. Okay, so that's how she— And you know what? I think that's like uh, Rush Limbaugh summed it up the best. They should take that whole speech and turn it into a campaign ad every four years and just play it, and then— They'll never win another election again. It's you know, they're not doing themselves any, that and that other dopey video that they keep making over and over and over again, where they have to repeat, you know, the latest one with Sally Field and um, one of the guys from Key and Peele and a bunch of other people that are like, I don't even know who they are, quite honest with okay. you. 
But so, so yeah, here's dude. what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to mend fences. Because if I can mend fences between bad cop, bad cop, and Juliet and Miranda, I can think I can fix these people too. And the thing is, you just got to let it go. You just got to say, okay, that's her opinion. Fair enough. I don't agree with her. Let it go. Why so offended? What's the big deal? I don't agree with her ability to say what she said. Why? But if you're going to throw – she has every right in the world to say what she said. Okay. That's what the country's building. Right. But if you are going to inject yourself into the political narrative, mm-hmm. you can't be upset because you got blowback from people that have a different view. But why the venom? That's it in a nutshell. Why the venom? That's what I want to know. Venom? The venom from the people from the, the, the right. Example, please. Okay, here we go. Well, you can't make a blanket statement. I, I'm just like going to have to go. I'm just going to go to my Facebook. Okay, just right. give me a second here. Oh, wait a minute. Are you talking like regular, regular people? people? Or are you talking some? Oh, okay. Just regular because people. Regular people on the left never have venom. I, I, I said yes. They're both both sides. Mm-hmm. Both sides. Yeah, just keep you on the right. If I said if the if the shoe was on the other foot and someone went up there and praised Trump, the Left would have lost their mind, and the right would have been, yay! Here we go. Stop that. I won't be able to cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here it is. I'm starting to, re- you know I'm starting to realize that if I need help or advice, I should consult a Hollywood actor or actress immediately. Well, that guy's brilliant. That seemed, they seem to know what is best for us and always have our better interests at heart. That's that, that's that the calm one. That's calm. I didn't hear any venom. Okay, I'm trying to think of the other one. What was his name? Whoever that guy is, he's, he's your brother. He's probably, yeah, I know. Oh, uh, <laughs> Joe runs in the family. Mm-hmm. It's brilliant. I hear you. What was his name? Oh, Joe. No, you just said it. Guy. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> this guy here. Holy shit! My, I actually jumped in on this one. No, you know me. <laughs> The ambassador of peace. <laughs> yeah. So you jumped in there, but in the same breath, you're complaining that Donald Trump will jump in there on a tweet. What I said, I, no, I asked a question. Okay. So this is what it, this is all it says. STFU Merle Street. <laughs> now, again, he, but not only does he do that, but now he jumps into his own comments. He goes, we don't need these over the hill celebrities. Understand? Real people don't give a shit about the Golden Globes or Oscars, Emmys, etc., or Hollywood in general anymore. But if it's fun to watch those old Hollywood bags struggle with their facts that you live by your sex appeal and you die by it. These baby booner bags from Hillary Clinton to Miss Street all the way down to Madonna need to get out of the effing way because America is tired of being forced to look at you. There is no medical or cosmetic procedure or diet fitness regimen at any price that can replicate a woman in her 20s. The end. Whatever happened to aging gracefully? These out-of-control, bitchy, real housewives or whatever they are need to stop because a waxed over-the-hill coochie is still over-the-hill coochie. (laughs) Now, would you say there's a little venom in that? No. No? (laughs) No. But he's right about the. Uh, I mean, if you if you part the venom from the message, basically everyone really doesn't care what celebrities think because they are they are not in touch. You know, like you knew you were in for a treat a, like a year cares. ago or two years ago when she started like some, I forget what it was. It was either the Golden Globes or the Academy Awards, and some actress got up there and started railing about the income inequality between men and women. And Meryl Streep jumps up and, yeah, you. Okay, now Meryl Streep, who's probably worth millions of dollars, right. is going to like jump up there and like start talking about income. If I had income in, I- income equality with Meryl Streep, I wouldn't be complaining. Right. You know, but, you know, and, and then of course, I, a lot of people have the issue when she, uh, in 2003, when she gave Roman Polanski, the child molester, uh, drug rapist, uh, who fled the country to avoid prosecution, a standing ovation when he won a Lifetime Achievement Award or something, the Academy Award. This is what people are sick of. Yeah, I'm of, sick John. of that, too. These people are moralizing. And, they, and you know, Hollywood is that like— That and uh, Woody I mean, Allen. It's a den of inequity. Yeah, look at him with uh, Soon Yi right. and, you know, that was horrible. 
And and all these people are like tripping over the opportunity to make a movie with him. Oh yeah, well that's because it's all oh, that's all about money. Uh, <clears throat> well, no, because he not so much now, but back in the day, he was he had the panache as a director that you in Hollywood you made it if you were cast in a Woody Allen film, even if you were already a success. When you were cast in one of his movies, that was it. You you had your resume for life. Absolutely. So the Donald goes off on Twitter, as usual, and I, and I go back to the same thing. The best picture I saw today was you ever see the meme where Batman's slapping Robin and there was always some kind of – yeah. the best one I just saw. As a matter of fact, it actually really made me belly laugh is <clears throat> Batman me. slapping Donald Trump and it says, stop tweeting. Stop tweeting, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's been around for a really? while. Really? That's the first time I saw it. Really? Oh, yeah. That was out even before Holy the – Holy uh, cow. I think that was – came out just around after he got the nomination. That's the first time I saw that. Like in August. That's, oh, yeah, that's amazing. Well, you live on Twitter. I live on Facebook. I live both. Trust me. I live mm-hmm. on both. Yeah, but you're, I'm more of a Facebook guy than you just, are. Listen, I'm as much on Facebook as you are. I also, I also am, I frequent Twitter. So now we're having a pissing contest. I'm just saying. Who does what? <laughs> that I use both. Are you sure you're sick? I am sick. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even talk about that yet. So anyhow, so now we have the right. We have our, our girlfriend, the little white, poofy, little yappy dog, Tommy Laren, who works for the Blaze Network. And, you know, she's the one that's on Facebook all the time. No venom there. I'm just saying. So she gets on there and she has her. I knew. Again, you know, immediately. That Snowflake is going to get on there and start ripping on Meryl Street. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the term Snowflake is basically pertains to these like lefty liberal college kids that had to have a crayon room to color in because they were and had tests canceled because Donald Trump won the election. I'm going. So I'm thinking that your application of the term Snowflake to Tommy Lahren no, is uh, off no, I'm base. not because I'm saying Snowflake because the same thing, the same thing. She got triggered. By something that really wasn't even that big of a deal. It's not like she dropped a pass and they got, you know, she was knocked out of a game and knocked the team out of a game. What do you mean? Uh, when it's, they reported her dead? Oh, yeah, that was true, too. Well, that that's kind of a big deal when someone reports you dead. Who's the, They report that, people dead all the time. Yeah, but why did – did you read that? I, 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 I don't want to quote the exact tweet because I off the top of it, but I know it was like pretty vindictive. So, again – and it wasn't like a cleverly played hoax one where like it looks like it might be legit. This was like full of vitriol. Right. And again, listen, I'm a, you know, I, I'm not, I you know, I call her a snowflake and everything like that because I just think I'm starting to get tired of it. You know, at first it was when she started. You know, I thought to myself, well, you know what, she's there and she's, what the heck was that? I don't know what happened. I'm sitting here and all of a sudden I heard like the, the house just shook, and I'm in the basement. Mm-hmm. Something explode. Did we just have an earthquake? I mean, the right house here. just shook. Unless you had a big ass truck go by. Uh, it was bigger than that. There's, there's a. I have a light down here to use a pull string to turn on, and it's like moving back and forth. Yeah, look out the window. See, there was a natural gas explosion somewhere. <laughs> we might have just had an earthquake here. Holy cow! So anyhow. Well, if you had had it there, I would have had it here, and we didn't feel nothing. Well, that was pretty weird. Anyhow, so let me get back to more facts as they develop. Yeah, let me get back to the uh, snowflake. So what I call snowflake is anybody that gets completely triggered by someone else's opinion. Like, like you. Like me. Yes. I'm a snowflake. I'm the biggest snowflake you've ever seen. Now, so now what happens is that both sides, it's just a complete attack. And you, like you said before earlier, which you were correct on, is it's better just to lay low, keep your opinions to yourself. Instead of jumping up, because now they're digging into her old tweets, Tommy's old tweets. Mm-hmm. And it seems like she was a bit of a snowflake back in the day. Now she's been, apparently she's going back and uh, deleting them. But of course, you know, that before you, de- you know, if you don't delete them right away and somebody screenshots them, then they're there forever. So she went to school at UNLV. And uh, mm-hmm. here's some of her tweets. Summer school has to be the dumbest invention of all time. Hashtag this sucks. Does anybody at this school speak English? Hashtag this is America. Love reading all the president's men. Nixon, Woodworth, Bernstein are my heroes. Watergate. And then 
I don't see anything wrong right. with. Okay, so these were. So yeah, this far, was in 2012. <laughs> okay, here we go. 2004. She was probably what, like 18, 19, uh, then? 12. Was she 20? Because she's pretty yeah, she's young. 25. So yeah, yeah, she's like early 20s. And again, this is what yeah, I'm talking about. Probably... So and again, I, I have a, I have, I'm going to go through this, and I, I want to circle around back if you let me. All mm-hmm. right. So here's the one, here's the one I like. I smell sex and candy. A girlfriend of hers and I are going to be out tonight. <laughs> Hashtag pop that p. Hashtag bottoms up. And then here's another one with her, with a picture of her with a bottle of, looks like Yingling, with a girl who has painted on, like her breasts are painted. Uh, like a painted on sports uniform or something Yeah, like but it's that. Yeah, but no, that. this is just like a, it's like she's got flowers painted over a, a nipple. That's all I can see. Yeah, they're just totally painted. Yeah, exactly. No yeah. clothes. That's hot. I'm not going to say it's not. All right. Then apparently she was broken up with. So... She had this tweet. In the words of Taylor Swift, we are never, ever, ever, ever getting back together. Ever, ever, ever. Don't creep on my Twitter. Then she has another one. First single V-Day in six years. Woot, woot. Anyone want to go cause trouble with me tonight? Hashtag V-Day. Anyone else need a drink? Hashtag V-Day. Guess what, brat? If you get me wet, I can't promise I won't accidentally drown you. So think about that. Bad news. Had to get a job. Good news. It's at my mom's store and chill as F. Living the dream. I don't, I don't know. What, what are you going to circle back so to? So what I'm I saying mean, is. They're, they're just aimless tweets. Of so a, what I'm saying is that yeah. back in the day, it seems like she was a little bit more liberal, a little bit more party than she is now. Well, because you like to drink a beer, you designate you as a liberal? No, I'm just saying. It just seems. That, that would make me the biggest liberal <laughs> in the world. It just seems that she was a little bit more liberal back in the day. And now she. And again. Hey, or maybe back in the day she was just a kid, you know, unpolished, and Twitter was a relatively new technology then. Yeah, and and now she's uh, changed her views, is working in a, for a media company, and it's become um, a pretty big deal. To be quite honest with you, and um, they're circling around, and now she's going to be blamed for her past. So when is your past? When do you get a pass on your past? Well, if you're a liberal, you always get a pass because uh, the standing <laughs> ovation that Roman Polanski got for raping the 13-year-old girl, I mean, that's okay. Mm-hmm. But if a conservative gets a, you know, in even far less trouble than that, they're ostracized forever. So there's a myriad of examples of that I could. So do you think that maybe we could just kind of let things go? Just say like, you know what? Well, all right. It would be nice if we could let things go, but it's the the, the, the sore losers that their candidate lost are the ones. I mean, they're going out of their way. And, I mean, the guy hasn't even taken the oath of office yet. And, well, we can impeach him. I'm like, he, he hasn't even done anything yet. You can't impeach someone that didn't take the oath of office You don't remember that that's going on when unhing- Obama took office? That's how unhinged they are. You don't remember that happening when Obama was elected? Before he took the oath of office? Think about what I just said, John. I said before this guy has even put his hand on the Bible and taken the oath of office, they're urging impeachment. Oh, I know. You cannot impeach somebody for something that he hasn't even done yet. He isn't even president yet. He's still private citizen Trump right now. You know, I understand what you're saying. I'm just trying to figure out how much longer this is going to go on. Well, it'll always go on. It started in 04 when Curry lost to Bush. They lost because, you know, as we all know, According to the liberals, George W. Bush was a simpleton, and the uh, explained haughty, esoteric John Curry was going to smoke him. And when that didn't happen, they had to go into the uh, present, destroy at all costs. I just don't see how— I mean, they, they've destroyed careers of people. Yeah, I just don't see how this is going to—I just have a feeling it's tearing a country apart. I really do. I, I don't know. I mean, it's getting well, worse. It's, it's yeah, getting it's worse a, and worse to where, yeah, it's, you know, it's, people are getting beat up if they have a Trump. Bumper sticker? I mean, look at the what happened with those four animals in, in Chicago, Chicago that, that uh, yeah. got a hold of that kid. Yeah, and that's the ironic thing that the left doesn't see because everything they accuse the right of doing, they I do. I agree with them. And they do it in spades. No pun intended. <laughs> yeah. No, I see what you're saying. And again, they should they should take those guys, those four people. I think it's women. There's girls and guys. In, two, two girls, two girls and two, and two guys. guys. And they should be locked up. As, that should be tried as a hate crime. I like the picture of the one girl having the breakdown. You know, like she's in tears. So they took her mugshot. Oh, yeah. yeah, they said, yeah, she's not so tough not now. Not so tough now. Uh-uh. And that guy, uh, 
Dylan Roof, the one that shot the nine people, that killed the nine people in the South Carolina church, they gave him the mm-hmm. death penalty today. Yeah, he they should, should get, get the death, death penalty. penalty. They should take him like right out back. As soon as that comes down, they should take him right out back, okay, put a hood over his head, have the fa- one, one, representative, re- one representative from each family member has a rifle, and they just shoot him right there. And it's done. And we, mo- we all go get something to eat. And we videotape. We put it on uh, live TV. Peace and beer. I had a relative um, when my family came over from mm-hmm. Italy. My grandfather, you say, he, he actually, uh, he died. He was like a, a great uncle of my, of Genghis's. <clears throat> and he must have died like in the 40s or something. He actually saw a guillotining in, uh, <sighs> he was in France. My goodness. Now that's something. Yeah. Like, yeah. And he died pretty old. Like he was like, you know, damn near 90. Yeah, and they were still using the guillotine in, uh, you know, the mid-1800s in France. And, uh, yeah, he saw that action. So you don't see a set, you don't see anything, we're not going to spiral out of this? You don't think we're ever going to live and let live? No, because they're trying to, the only way it'll happen is if, if you know, and that's what they're afraid of, I think, because they, they didn't do it to this extent, but they did the same thing to Reagan before he took office. Now, they weren't, like, calling for impeachment or killing the guy or anything like that like they are against trump and the biggest thing that ha- that happened to them that they hated that was reagan was so successful and i think that's what they're afraid oh. of i think they're afraid that his ideas might actually just work i mean the market's booming companies are hiring people they're staying in the country and it's like you know this guy didn't even put his hand on the bible like i mentioned he's already made america great again you could say well okay so here's my thing and again i I'm all for all that, but my my thing is like you know how about just taking a little bit of humble pie right now, staying off the Twitter, letting them say what they say, and put your money where your mouth yes, is. Yes, because Obama was the most humble president we've had in the last eight years. I mean, he gave himself an award. Yeah, you I saw, saw that, that, right? I find that yeah, he didn't bring that right. up. So you know, I mean, you're talking about awards right now. Me and you, we're going to give ourselves the greatest podcasters in the universe award because we've yeah, earned it. We have, uh, you know. Well, that's basically what Obama episodes. just said. Yeah, I mean, he gave himself an award, or the Medal of Freedom Award, or something, some very prestigious. He awarded it to himself. I mean, <laughs> that's your guy. You voted for him once. Yeah, well, once right. is enough. Um, it's like that meme of that chick kicking the guy in the nuts. So you always see that's for voting for <laughs> Obama. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're finding the same thing that's uh, that that's happening now. If they find out you vote for Trump, I mean, it's almost uh, it's almost back to the time of McCarthyism, where they're you know it could ruin. They're, they're firing people if they find mm-hmm. out you supported Trump. It's happening. I like that. There was a restaurant in Las Vegas. He said, "If you voted for Trump, you're not welcome here." And like, wow, talk about putting yourself out of business like real yeah. fast. How stupid yeah. is that? Yeah, because Nevada went for Trump, I'm pretty sure. Well, again, didn't why they? just – why? Why is that the biggest – I mean, I understand. Listen, I didn't want to – Well, because this is what happens because we're, we live in a culture of self-absorbed people on social media and you got a bunch of people. that They're normalizing this stuff. I tell you. I mean, I look around and I, for the most part. I mean, there's extremes everywhere and there's always an exception to a rule. But generally, it's like the older people, like our age and up, are a little bit more level-headed about this. It's the younger people, like in their twenties, the millennials, and like because this is just this is normalized to them. This is just they think this is how it's supposed yeah, to be. I tell you, I do like the part about Twitter where you can get right to somebody. Like you can, you know, they tweet something, you can send it back to them. And if they see it, you know, they can see it. I mean, I don't think you. I mean, I can't imagine what Trump's Twitter looks like. I mean, it must it must look like a, you know, like a slot machine just going you know people tweeting back at him and retweeting the stuff mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff i mean I, th- I said the same thing i said like donald do me a favor please put down the twitter it's like a three-year-old playing with a loaded gun it's not going to end well yeah well in a sense i mean i think that the timber of his twittering could be a little bit yeah rational i guess but they're, everyone's uh, on the you know the the media. They're so upset at him uh, with the twitters because he basically doesn't need them. He you know because why why would you if you're Donald Trump, okay, or if you're any uh, Republican in mm-hmm. office, you've got the main 
news outlets are all controlled right. by and, the and left. And that needs to stop, too. Do you really think that they're going to, like, why should you give them a message that they're going to dissect and parse any way they want to make it look bad, or would you rather just take your message directly to the people? No, I agree with you. And, and again, the media is, because of the slants, because before you are supposed to just report the news, you weren't supposed to add bias to it. And that's not happening mm-hmm. anymore. And again, it, the reason that is me, it's, you know, because everybody has their own take on things. Now, listen, it's not... There's no uh, – it's no surprise that I did not want Trump to be president. It's no surprise that I didn't want Hillary to be president. Uh, you know, uh, we talked about my buddy. And what is Aleppo? Exactly. And, you know, I am a, a person that says, hey, you know what? When I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And I listened to a podcast. Actually, Jerry from Bad Cop, Bad Cop uh, put a link for a podcast where the one of the high ups in his campaign uh, – Gary Johnson's campaign. Gary Johnson's. Yeah. Okay. She was on a podcast and she kind of was like a tell all kind of podcast. And uh, what she was saying was it was amazing. Like basically the Libertarian Party kind of imploded. Oh, it absolutely. It did. And because he, he really was no, as we talked about before, he was a, a Republican that had nowhere to go in that party. So he jumped ship. Right. So well, the woman said the better ticket would have been Weld up front and Johnson as the vice president. And then what happens is like anything else in politics. It's, you know, they're fundraising. There's money to be made. And, you know, they started hiring. Uh, Johnson started hiring people for his campaign. And they're just in there suckling from the teat and making money. And that's all that what they were there for. Mm-hmm. So it just kind of just pisses me off that we don't – there's nobody to vote for. Nobody. And then I think to myself, who would want to run this country? Who would want to do this job? Well, there is somebody. There is somebody to vote for. the The problem is, is you're you're going to be destroyed. I mean, it's like you, you expect them to come after you, but they come after your family. I mean, look at Ivanka Trump. She gets on a plane, and you know that guy just starts berating her and her kids. Right, and I'm sure. You know? And again- I talk about like. So it's, you know, talking out of two sides of your face, you know, it's if she took a, a, a private jet anywhere she wanted to go, because they're certainly wealthy enough to do that. Oh, look at them. Carbon footprint. They're ruining the planet. Oh, they're too good to fly with us. So then she flies coach on JetBlue, which from what I understand, she always did. And he yells at her, why aren't you flying private? Why are you even here? Right. So it's like you can't win. You can't even win for, you know, trying. And then they, the guy gets thrown off the plane, which they should have thrown him off the plane. And he's like, oh, I'm getting thrown off the plane because I'm uh, voicing my opinion. No, you're getting thrown off the plane because you're acting like a jerk off. All right. You with your baby and your your uh, husband, dude. That was the funny thing of it all because everyone, like I said, everyone has to be a media whore because his husband, before anything even happened, tweeted out that he was marching down the aisle to harass right. her. And that was the use he used. That was the word he used was harass. Right. So <laughs> they uh, they marched him off the plane. Which they should have. Yeah, they frog marched him right off. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, buddy. How'd you like that? Now you got to get another hey, but, flight. Yeah, I don't know what the answer is, but it's uh, sadly, I think this all started in 2004, and I don't see it ending anytime soon. Well, I think we should go ahead. Go, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, now I got to hear what you're going to say. Well, I was thinking maybe because I, I, I'm dying to know this because you're holding information from me, but. You you uh, put a, uh, something up here from our buddies that we did the uh, review Crime on. Crime and Cocktails. Uh, we did a podcast about, I guess it was maybe the last one or the one before that. I, don't, I, should, I should know that. I don't. I think it was uh, episode 29 maybe or 30. 30. It was episode 30. Crime and Cocktails. Uh, they actually put out another episode. It was another hour and a half. I listened to the whole damn thing. Uh was it any better than the, than the hour no. and a half that I that I listened to? <laughs> Here, here's the deal with crime. And co- now I have to go back. Here's and the deal with crime one. and cocktails. They don't know. They have no idea that they've they've started up a shitstorm. They have no idea that you know people are talking about them. They they they're in their own little bubble, and that's where they want to be. And he did say that he says uh, the one guy says, "Yeah, well, no one's listening to this show because someone put us on blast on Twitter." And I'm thinking to myself, "Okay, all right." Let's see what he's got to say about this. But it wasn't even anything that we said. And he said it was only one guy. And I'm like, okay. And then Ma's like, who is it? Who, who is it? You tell me who it is. He's just probably somebody 40 years old living in his mama's basement. And, and then they just moved on to something else. So it was, it was basically all that they really talked about, about that. 
Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, uh, I don't know, an hour and 15 minutes in or something like that. I got. I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't listen to the whole. I mean, I kind of spot checked through and kind of scrubbed around. Did you doze off? <laughs> it's just they all start talking at the same time. You can't understand a fucking word. It's worse than the View. Did they let Amanda out of the pantry closet? Amanda wasn't there at first, but all of a sudden she come meandering in. She, I call her Kenny from South Park. <laughs> Or Bane from the last uh, Batman movie. <laughs> so, uh, the, and, and what he said, he Batman. says, he says, I don't care about anything. All I do is I drink and we talk about something here and I record it and that's it. And then, you know what, dude, if that's what you want to do and hey, you know what, have at it. You know, if that's well, there's an ass for every seat. That's right. Again, I really don't have a problem with the guy doing a podcast the way he's doing it. No, it was the one star. It was reviews. the one star reviews that really went up my ass. Like an, open, like an open umbrella. And uh, so he doesn't – and I'm just dying. Maybe one day he'll turn on that pooter box and get over to those iTunes reviews and see what's going on. Or, mm-hmm. you know, he's going to go to his Twitter account. Now, if you go to Twitter, the Twitter, and you go to Crime and Cocktails, or I think it's Crime Cocktails. Crime and Cocktails, but it's at Crime Cocktails, okay? Okay. They have one tweet and one follower. Guess who the follower is? Uh, themselves us we're the only one that follows them (laughs) (laughs) i thought you meant like other than us no we are it (laughs) they have one tweet here's their tweet new episode dropped check crime and cocktails.com itunes or any other podcasting app that's it that's Mm. it they're not on facebook i don't think and they have one tweet and one follower and the follower is us and, uh, wow, that's just terrible. And that's it. Truth is stranger than fiction. I know. You just can't make that shit up. No, you can't. All right, well, let's wrap up this nightmare. We were just going to test out the equipment tonight. Yeah, hopefully it sounds okay. Yeah, it, it might be a little bit uh, – I think my microphone is going to sound a little bit different because I got one other piece of equipment that I tried to hook up and it, it wasn't cooperating. Oh, my God. I got to tell you this story. So I'm in here, right? And I'm trying to uh, hook up my microphone and I'm speaking into this thing and I'm like, what's going on? I don't hear anything coming out. And I'm like, what? The? And what happened was I bought this um, headphone. It's an adapter where you can hook in four other headphones and each one has their own volume. So everybody can set their own volume. Okay. So I had plugged that in and I plugged my thing in. I'm in there and I'm looking. I'm like, this thing was working. What the hell? I go back. I never turned the volume up on the headphone. Oh. <laughs> So I'm here for like 15 minutes, spitting and cursing. What? Well, this isn't the right. What did I do? I'm moving knobs, checking this, checking connections. Retracing wires. Right, and the knobs turned down. I was like, oh, my God, what an idiot. <laughs> well, you know, when you have from the picture that you sent out, um, you have a lot of stuff piled up on that table. So <laughs> it's not- I, think I, I think any rational person would uh, forgive your uh, – Lack of uh, memory there on that. Well, you know, like I said, I was, I would go. And you were sick too, um, right? Yeah. Well, no, not really. What happened was I had my daughter come over here and help me on Saturday. So she came down and she got the table and we drug stuff around. And we brought equipment down. And we started hooking the things up and, and uh, you know, we were doing that. Well, here, little did I know that Friday, one of somebody in the house caught that stomach virus. Mm-hmm. So I wake up about six o'clock this morning and I wake up, I'm like, oh, no. I think I'm going to get sick, and I hate to get sick. I I can't. I just utterly hate to vomit. What do you mean, like vomit? Like, pro, oh, okay. So yeah, I'm like, that's... I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to get sick. So then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, and I get up and I run into the bathroom, and sure enough, are you one of those people that you throw up often, or do you hardly hardly ever throw up? Ever throw up. Hard yeah, I never, never throw up. I never throw up. I mean, if I'm sick, I'll fight it. I'll fight it. I don't want to throw up. No, I just don't throw up. I don't know what it is. I think in my entire, I mean, non-alcohol induced vomiting, I think I can count on one hand. Really? How many times I've thrown up. I just don't throw up. That's amazing. The one time I threw up, remember, you were at the, you were at this back in the day. Um, we were playing back in the day at DBK. You had the Monday night, little background. You had Monday night. I had Tuesday night. The Bitter Asian Man had Wednesday. Pink had Thursday. And Ivan the Terrible had Friday. So Sunday night, we were at Don's house, and we ordered pizza from Domino's. Okay. 
And me and Ivan the Terrible ordered, we decided we would split the sausage pizza. And within like 25 minutes, I was the like, sausage that was bad? Pizza was, oh, <laughs> that pizza was no good. Yeah, bad sausage. So, you got mad, bad meat in a can? Yeah, that's what killed <laughs> Liberace, bad meat in a can. <laughs> So I went, I went home and Don's, at, I was still living with my mom and dad then. And at that time, the house was, you know, like a two minute ride home. Well, I went home and immediately just vomited. You know, I was like, well, that was food poisoning. I missed work the next day, man. It tore me up. Yeah. So you guys were all at the radio station the next day. And they're like, oh, where's Deuce? Where's Deuce? You know, <laughs> like, and, I, and you're saying it on the air. And I'm like, and I'm naturally trying to call into the request line because there was no cell phones then. Right. And I was like, yeah, I'm like deathly ill, that goddamn pizza <laughs> that we ordered. And then they told me that I didn't know it at the time, but Ivan got sick too, but he got sick at Don's house. <sighs> so it was like instantaneously, I mean, you know. Yeah. But no, I, if I'm sick, I just generally don't do that. Yeah. Uh, well, again, I don't know what happened. So this morning I woke up, and here's the thing. Like I, pro- I knew that probably that you could have come over today, but I didn't want to give you this, man, because it, mm-hmm. you know, they got it, and I mean – it just comes on, and it's like a well. I guess it's they were sick Sunday, and this morning. Well, it's all over Facebook, right? Like uh, friends of mine in Florida, oh. uh, Texas, Arizona, uh, everywhere, like coast to coast, people saying that they're, they've got. So this. all I've had today was. So when you called the audible this morning, I said, well, "I ain't going to Jones' house." <laughs> so I have Clorox wipes, and you know, we'll give this a couple of days and let this let everything die here, and I'll wipe everything down and. Next podcast, we'll you know come over here and then, who should be the first guest? Should it be Joe or the Jimmy? Well, you made the Jimmy into a national celebrity. I think he should really. You think Jim, he should be the first one? It's the Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? I haven't seen the Jimmy oh, in Jimmy. decades. What do you do? Yeah, I. Uh, well, I see him. You know, we talk. Well, all the, you know, we talk all the time. <laughs> but I'm saying I'm a little, a little nervous about having the Jimmy on the. I don't know what, what what's going to happen. Like a loose cannon. Yeah, it's a little bit saying? of a loose cannon. I don't know where he's going to go. Yeah, it could be. It could be hysterical. Could be much high jinkery. Yes, it could be, or you know, it just could be. The last time I saw, I saw him and Mike. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. What? What the hell was that? <laughs> it's a tire blowout. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it could be. Yeah, you know, Jimmy could be. You know, could be really, really good. Or. So, man, that came out of the blue. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, the last time I saw him was um, Mike was uh, still uh, still had the Corvette. Oh, okay. And he was in the midst of uh, refurbishing it. And I know he sold that off like in the early 90s. Okay. So that's, you know, we're talking literally it is decades. I'll tell you another thing. Bring something, like bring a sweat jacket because it's cold as shit down here. I don't know if it'll be cold next week when you get down here, but holy mackerel, is it cold right now. My nipples right now could cut ice. Well, dude, cut it is glass. uncommonly cold. Yesterday when I went to work, <clears throat> we got the snowstorm right. on Saturday, and it got brutally cold here. And uh, for those of you who don't live on the East Coast, or, but the whole country's cold anyway. But I keep my car in the garage, and I backed it out, and you have the thermometer on the dashboard. Well, it said it was like 46 degrees, and I'm like, eh, you know. <laughs> and then I'm driving to work, and it looked like – I was going to launch missiles out of the car because it was like doing a countdown so fast. It was like going 19, 18, 17. I was like, whoa, what the hell? It got to zero degrees. And I was like, there's something wrong with this car. Because to me, it didn't feel like it was that cold. Then I drove by a bank in Glassboro and they had the time and thermometer up. And that clock, uh, it said zero degrees too. I was like, man, and I was out yesterday. It was brutal. It was just a brutal day. Yeah. And, you know, for me here, you know, I don't have to go out, so I'm not going out. Yeah. Well, that's why it's so cold in your basement. Probably, you know, it's just well, so ungodly cold now. There, there's baseboard heat down here, but I can't figure out how to turn it on. I got to, you know, I don't want to call Big T in here. It might be on a separate breaker because they draw uh, a lot of heat. But it's, it's I mean, hot I mean, a lot water. of juice. It's hot water. It's like a radiator. Oh, oh, okay. So they maybe there's a valve turned off the off valve or, to get well, the I figured there had it. to be some kind of thermostat down here. Yeah, generally what you got to do is trace the pipe. Yeah, I'm going to go start a tracing a pipe somewhere. around here. I'm not tracing no pipe. A- again, no. I never came down here. Well, now you have to Now do I it. have to come down here. Yeah, turn in your man card. <laughs> I unfriend you. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, it's easy. Just look for the pipe that goes in the I'm, radiator. I'm Run it back. There's got to be a valve works. somewhere. That's not how any of this works. <laughs> You liar! Yeah, that, that's probably all it is. It's an easy fix. But yeah, I'll, I'll bring a jacket. You know. Hey, it's a little chilly down here. I'm not going to lie. I'll yeah, bring beer. Right. I'll tease you from afar. Hey, I'm drinking and you can't. I'll have a big old glass of iced tea. I, you know me. I was never really a beer drinker anyhow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know what I'll do? I'll have a nice tumbler of Jack and Coke to uh, christen to the new- To infuriate your doctor. <laughs> no, just to christen the new studio. Uh-huh. I have a little cocktail. We got, like I said, I got one, two. And we'll talk enough. about crime. And we'll talk about crime. We'll be the Crime and Cocktail Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the real crime is forcing somebody to like listen to that. That's a <laughs> that crime is you need cocktails to listen to this shit. <laughs> Do me a favor. Listen to that show. Tell me what you think. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. What's he mad at me? <laughs> it's like it's terrible is what I think. Again, again what, you know. Where's the joke? I'm like, wait, where's the <laughs> Hey, look. There's Listen a, to it in my car. There's an ass for every seat. I'm sure there's a few people out there that are like the crime of podcasting. Yeah, they're, they're all I, named I, There's probably and... people out there that can't stand this show or think that we're oh, jackasses. Sure. I, I, I have no uh, delusions that everyone loves everybody, but... Oh. You don't go out doing one star reviews on thirty one other podcasters. That is true. Hey, listen, uh, real quick, a guy that I do a mastermind with. He's another podcaster. He's a fan of our show. He's from Canada, Mark Decote. Uh You followed Hi, him. Mark. Mm-hmm. You followed him on Twitter, mm-hmm. and he today in the mastermind. He's like, "Hey, Duke's followed me on Twitter." He, like he was all excited. I was like, "Really? You should because Duke doesn't really go to Twitter." But there you go. I've been um, learning. Well, that's good. Yeah, it's it's not as um, it's not like it doesn't work like Facebook. No, it's very quick. Yeah, it's very different, and you know, it's uh, it moves very fast, like you said. And my thing is, I'm afraid of like fucking up tragically, <laughs> so that's what I'm like avoiding. Like, uh, Cassie from Tone the Trigger. Trigger, she just uh, she had something wrong with her account. I think she came got a new account, mm-hmm. and she's back on the Twitter. And Bad Cop, Bad Cop, and Juliet Miranda, they're in there. They're making all kinds of niceties now. Look at me, bringing people together. Not going to lie. <laughs> Not going to lie. I was trying to start a little internet fight, but look at Juliet being the, the better person. Yeah. And actually making friends. That's how you do it, folks. So much for your devious plan. Yeah, it didn't work. Oh, yeah. What the hell? I'm sure I can start shit somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I want to do some shout outs because I think that's a kind of a cool thing to do at the end. I'm going to I'm going to copy off of uh Bold and Belligerent and Bad Cop Bad Cop. Of course, uh, big fan of the Bad Cop Bad Cop show. Those guys are insane. And uh man, are they on, are they on a lot of different podcast networks? Man, those guys are doing it. Uh Three is Comedy and also Jason started a new podcast called the WTF w- is Success. I'm sorry, I should let you do that cuz I know. Yeah, I listen to all three of them so far. There's three of them out there. Yep. See, if you were a real fan, when I went to look, he wasn't. It wasn't on yeah, iTunes. You go, yet. fanboy. <laughs> okay, you're failing miserably. All right, and then uh, we have <laughs> toe on the trigger with Daniel Rippoltz and uh, Cassie. Mm-hmm. I, I don't have a nickname for her yet. I don't really know Cassie. And then we have. Well, it's a constantly evolving nickname. Yeah, In fact, yeah. Uh, it depends on what's I'm going listening on. to their their latest one uh, on the way home tonight. Oh, really? I haven't got I'm a about halfway tonight. through it. Bold and belligerent. Those guys are really insane. They got new dice. They're always want. They always want to throw the. You know, it's the dice of doom, is it? Mm-hmm. That you they throw and then they have to do some kind of crazy act. It's almost like out of the jackass realm, you know what they have to do. So uh, they got some new dice and, and those guys, they're insane. The unwritable rant. The unwritable rant. With did you listen to the latest? I one? Don't spoil it for me because it's going to be a good one. I don't know what's going on. You know. Yeah, I, I heard it. Has a secret. Uh, she has a favorite serial killer. Who has a favorite serial killer? Well, on crime and cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you should ask there. Ma, what would you say was your favorite serial killer? Well, I used to like the son of Sam. But I don't know. Since we've been doing this podcast now, I feel that... 
That goddamn chicken. Well, that was interesting. I don't know what the fuck happened there. <laughs> I don't even know what we were doing. I'm sitting there talking, and then all well, of a sudden, we were we were playing sound effects about crime and cocktails. And cocktails. the next thing I know, I didn't hear you anymore. And, I, and on your end, I just was me saying "fuck." Yeah, and all I got was uh, it sounded like a uh, like when a CD would skip back in the day. <laughs> yeah, and we couldn't get anything. We couldn't get any sound out of the Hangout, or we couldn't get sound out of anything. I blame Obama. I think I'm blaming Trump. You can blame Obama. I'm blaming Trump. <laughs> thanks, Trump. Doesn't have the same ring as thanks, nah. Obama. It really doesn't. Or should be thanks, Donald. I don't care. Thanks don't to know. Donald. Thanks to Donald. All right. I guess. I guess Cass was saying you guys talk too much. <laughs> we How long was that? Out. I think it was like an hour and thirty. That's maybe not hour that. We've gone longer than that. We have gone longer than that. So, anyhow, uh, thank you very much for listening, and we really appreciate you listening. And listen, if you haven't subscribed to the show yet, please do go to iTunes or whatever podcast listening app you have. Please subscribe there. That would help us out immensely. And we would love it if you follow us on the Twitter. And, you know, Deuce, he hangs on the Facebook, so go over to Facebook and check us out over there. And you can find all those links at brandxpodcast.com slash contact and uh, if you really love us you can give us a, a review over on iTunes like crime and cocktail this podcast is neither drunk nor funny <laughs> go over there and, and uh, we'll read it so check for the, shits and giggles for shits and giggles yes all right Deuce well we shook down Studio B we had a little Fuck up here. A little, a little bit of an epic meltdown on the sound there. I don't know but what the, that was. But it waited till the end, thank God. Yeah. And uh, now- well, We didn't lose nothing, so- Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Uh, I'll know once I turn this off, and if we lost everything, then you'll probably hear that from- You'll probably hear the fuck from your house. <laughs> and then my house will shake like an earthquake. <laughs> your house will shake. Oh, my God, John's pissed. Yeah, I looked on Twitter. I don't see anything. I looked on my personal Twitter- and I don't usually. Last time we had an earthquake, I looked on my personal Twitter. All it said was earthquake. But I don't see anything like that, so I don't know. Maybe it was a big truck that went by. Yeah, it was a big one. I'll tell you that. Yeah, and they load them up with that, uh, you know, heavy duty, you know, those oversized load trucks with a house on them or something. Maybe one of those rolled by. And Very possible. It doesn't take much. And uh, you know what? I don't even. We were doing the shout outs. Is what we were doing. Yeah. And then everything rolled out of here. So if we didn't shout out your podcast. We apologize. We'll do it next time. And uh, we'll catch you next week. Have a great week, everyone. <laughs>